coffee kind of pops open like popcorn does um, when it reaches a certain temperature. So a lot of the coffee, when we dump it into the cooling tray, it kind of still makes that noise. So it pops, uh, a little bit of smoke comes out. It's a beautiful aroma. Um, and then I guess that translates into when I make coffee here with the espresso machine um, and you grind the coffee for the first time in that day and you get the aroma of the fresh ground coffee. Coffee is a beverage that I consume pretty much all day long and pretty much maybe 10 times what the average consumer consumes um, just because of the way that it tastes, um, the way that it makes you feel, um, has a nostalgia about it, um, also makes you very happy. Um, and it also takes you back to, I mean, to the countries of origin. So all the work that the farmers put into it, um, I mean, all the way from planting the coffee to processing it, to shipping it out. Um, and it just kind of brings it all together in respects to uh, from seed to the cup. Um, for me, it changed my life because it gave me a, a passion. I mean, it really, it was something that I kind of fell in love with right away. It was the sensory aspect of it, tasting different coffees from different regions of the world, even different countries um, and different regions in those countries and how they could be so drastically different. Um, so that's how I fell in love with coffee and that's how it changed my life and also gave me a, a purpose, I guess you could say. And my, my Paul's the coffee expert. I, I came a little bit later to the game of, of drinking coffee and I was only exposed to bad coffee. So that was my perception, which I feel like that's the perception of the majority of the, the coffee drinkers that we, uh, that we run into, especially in this market. Um, so it was interesting to me to, to find that coffee is much more complex and uh, different than what most people are used to. And then we really have a passion for helping uh, larger brands integrate great coffee and great pro coffee programs into their, um, their normal um, service of food and beverage. Um, so it's, it's great for us and, and that's, um, you know, from my standpoint, it's great that we're able to introduce a lot of people to what great coffee is. It's also great too because it's a product that whenever you're discussing with people, people are always happy to talk about it. So everybody loves talking about coffee. It's not really something that's polarizing. And there's no, no better compliment that I think we receive than um, you know, someone saying that you really changed my perception of what coffee could be, or that was one of the best coffees I've had in my life. Um, those types of things are, are, are really, uh, it never gets old hearing that. So I think that it's up to us to really um, help other people understand what our passion is for coffee and how it's so easily integrated into their day and they can feel that same, like, oh, wow, this is so much better than what I've been having before. And um, that experience that people have every morning where they, you know, they, it, it's such ingrained in their routine. So if we can be part of people's routines in the morning, that's, that's a pretty uh, great place to be, I think. If we roast uh, 1,200 pounds of coffee per week, that's roughly, what, 10 to 20,000 people mm -hmm. that drink our coffee every week, at least, you know? So, so that's what's, that's, you know, when, when you look at it and you think about it that way, you know, there's literally someone right now, or multiple people right now in the middle of this interview drinking our coffee. That's pretty cool, so. Cuban coffee, well, that's something that I love doing is because it's a, it's a type of story that we're surrounded by. It's everywhere, but people take it for granted. So I feel like to capture the beauty and simplicity of everyday life, there's probably something um, there that, that deserves recognition and because it's historically, culturally valuable. There's, okay, so, Flagler. Flagler Street, this is the first street of Miami. Flagler Street. Flagler is the, the, the guy that came here, he built a railroad. Uh, the railroad was like the first thing that 
before before um before Flagler, nobody really came to Miami. Only the Native Americans, the Calusa Indians, Miccosukee, Seminole. Uh, and then Flagler built a railroad. A lot of people from the Bahamas, they came from the Bahamas, from the islands. And they worked and they built and they created Miami. I had this idea to do this book maybe 10 years ago. About five years ago, I got serious about it. And then about two years ago, I had the actual opportunity to put it into drive, get the vehicle running and make it happen and bring it to life. And now um, 2018, it's been a major hit. The concept of the book was to do the whole Southwest A Street, from South Beach to the Everglades, going to every Cuban coffee window along the way, which there's about 60 of them. And the book goes through 100 or so windows. Well, the book is not just about Cuban coffee, but Cuban coffee windows, the specific phenomena of the structural um, existence of a physical manifestation of a commercial activity that takes place between the street and the private establishment. I'm inspired by is a photographer named Robert Frank. He did a book called The Americans, where he drove around the country just shooting with a 35 millimeter pocket camera, shooting from the hip. And um, that was where I got the idea to do something. And that was just the subject that I chose. Yeah, so this was all done on bike and cars. Just, all you had to do is just pull over any, any block. Like as we were walking along 8th Street, or no, we were walking along Flagler Street. It was like every block, a different window. This lady that was like on the run from the Nicaraguan government. They were trying to kill her and they'd been after her family for generations. And she walked like 500 blocks a day and she drank 10 coffees at, um, at a time. The thing that they say that is funny about Cuban coffee is like the beans are from Brazil. The machine is from Italy. The, the lady making the coffee is from Honduras. So what makes it Cuban coffee? So it's the culture with which uh, is created. <laughs> yeah, I love this city. It's special. I feel very comfortable here and it is just enjoyable. The atmosphere, the environment, the, the frequency, the vibrations of the light. It's just everything is very agreeable and it's, it's good if you like live in the moment because that's what it's really all about anyways. I was one way plus Alan Lomax who was just, um, went and talked to the people in different places and nobody else was talking to. And um, I've, I like their work. So I always want to do something like that. I mean, you know, just keep continuing. Just keep continuing doing it. We're on the road maybe 300 days a year and uh, helps us sell more coffee and form more relationships, but we really enjoy that too. So we, um, we incorporated in uh, 2004, but uh, I feel like we started the company about 30 years ago when I met my wife, uh, Eliana, she's from Columbia, and uh, I'm from Massachusetts up north, and I came down here 30 years ago to Miami. We met, fell in love, she took me to her home country of Columbia, and uh, the next morning I had a cup of coffee and I was blown away about how good it was rich, smooth, clean finish, very flavorful. So I wanted to know what it was, and you know, they all thought I was crazy because they were used to drinking such good coffee. And uh, anyway, you, if you live in Colombia, you either grow coffee yourself or you have friends or family that grows coffee. So it wasn't long before I was on a coffee farm and starting to learn about coffee, growing coffee and, and roasting coffee. You know, we, at some point in the beginning, were not going to sleep at night. We were working 18, 19, 20 hours. Sometimes I was doing all-nighters because this stuff had to be done. 
And, you know, my wife has been huge in this. And early on, you know, it was three o'clock in the morning and I'd say, I got to go home. I got to get some sleep. I'm tired. And she said, no, I, we got to finish these orders. You know, so that's the other thing. You got some other people that can support you. Um, it really helps. But uh, I can't imagine trying to do it myself without the help of somebody that was right there by my side. So Miami was a very tough market. Actually, the first batch that we roasted, uh, I went up and down Biscayne Boulevard with samples to restaurants. I said, you want to buy my coffee? You want to buy my coffee? And there was a restaurant owner that said, sure, I'll buy your coffee. We just need uh, this air pot, this brewer, this equipment over here. I'm like, what? He said, oh yeah, all the big companies, they provide all this equipment for free to buy the coffee. So it was, it was very difficult. Miami, on the other hand, is very good because it's the gateway to Latin America. So, you know, and we've got a lot of people here that also live in the coffee growing countries that we have forged relationships with. So the coffee comes into Miami, we roast it, we send it to the rest of the world from here. In Miami, you know, it's a certain type of coffee, it's a culture, it's a habit, it's a, you know, a tradition. So, um, you know, it's, it's become part of my life because, um, you know, I'm, I'm living it and um, you can't help but learn every day something new about coffee. It's interesting because the first batch that we roasted, uh, I gave it to the first person and they said, ooh, that's too strong. And I gave it to the second person and they said, ooh, that's too weak. And I said, okay, wait a minute, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna produce what I know is a great tasting coffee, something that I had in Colombia uh, for the first time. And then I'm gonna educate people. We're gonna communicate why this is a better quality coffee. And uh, unfortunately, that's been successful for us. So I'm breaking the cup now. When I break it, it releases and I'm grabbing everything. The temperature's right. I'm just checking. You don't want to burn it. By doing that and aerating, uh, you really get the feel for it and um, what you're looking for. Right out of the bat, I know it's a, a, a good coffee, not, nothing pops out of it. Never give up. I mean, if you could boil it down to anything, if you believe in it, never give up and you'll be successful. Yeah, people that uh, are coffee drinkers, they have to have it, just like they have to have water. You know, I, I don't drink a lot. I drink two cups a day in the morning, but um, I have to have it and it has to be good. 